Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerplate.com. I've been asked by our friends at Mind Manager to share some ideas about the ways mind mapping and visualization techniques can help to simplify and streamline strategic planning in organizations and hopefully make it a more collaborative and engaging process at the same time. So let's take a look. Perhaps the greatest overall benefit of using mind mapping software for strategic planning is that you can go right the way through from an initial brainstorm and exploration of where you are today, all the way through to goal setting, action planning, and even progress monitoring, all within a single, easy to manage visual document. So let's take a look at each of these stages in turn. A great place to start your strategic planning is by thinking about your current position and your operating environment. The purpose at this stage is to pause, reflect, capture important ideas and information, and reveal some of the key issues that might come to shape our strategy. Using mind mapping software to support this part of the process is a great way to help you structure your thinking. Software like Mind Manager provides an expansive and adaptable canvas on which to capture organize and prioritize your ideas. And when you're done, it also serves as an excellent visual record of all the thinking that went into the eventual strategy. You can start quickly and easily by using established frameworks for strategic thinking, like SWOT, PESTLE, SCORE, or any other established model. In this example, we're going to use a SWOT analysis template to start brainstorming the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we see in the organization today. So here you can see a basic SWOT analysis mind map. And if you want, you can jump straight into the process of adding ideas to the mind map using just the insert or return keys on your keyboard to quickly capture ideas. If you're working with a group, however, I'd recommend getting them to note down ideas on post-it notes or flip charts before you start adding them into the mind map, as this helps to control the flow of ideas a little better and also avoids the group getting anchored or distracted with the first few ideas that they see up on the map. Regardless of how you approach it, adding ideas into the mind map is quick and easy, and the structure encourages and enables us to be pretty expansive in our thinking, whilst also helping to capture and organize ideas in a much more structured and coherent way than the messy post-its and flip charts usually do. As you go through this early stage process, it can be helpful to think in terms of capturing and categorizing information. For example, we've captured a few things here in strengths that we could probably group together under a people category like so. The minute we create that people category under strengths, we're also going to be prompted to think about any other people strengths that could be added into the mind map. We may also be prompted to add the people category to other parts of the mind map so that we can examine the people subject, but from a different perspective, such as weaknesses. As such, you can see how the mind map already starts to serve to both capture our perspectives, but also prompt additions and extensions to the thinking, which is a great way for your team to build on each other's ideas if you're working in a group. Once you spend some time capturing and categorizing the ideas in your mind map, it may start to look a little bit more like this. You can see that we have a clear structure for all of the inputs that we've gathered, and the software makes it easy for us to show or hide parts of the mind map and move around to view whatever levels of detail we want. When working in teams or with stakeholders, if the mind map is visible to everyone as it takes shape like this, you also have a fantastic opportunity to edit, correct, and refine thinking in real time by asking people to clarify, expand, or correct what they see on the screen. This can save you hours later on in the process because you can avoid endless back and forward afterwards about what was said or what particular idea was supposed to mean. If you're facilitating the discussion, simply asking, have I captured this correctly, can be a great way to ensure there's little room for debate after the event, and it also helps to ensure the group feels a sense of ownership in the contents of that document. Once you've built out your mind map by capturing and categorizing ideas and information, we want to try and go a step further by clearly prioritizing what matters most amongst all the different items that have been raised. Software like Mind Manager makes this very easy to do. You can add priority markers directly onto topics within the mind map to mark up visually certain topics as being critical or important, like so. You can easily change those markers, move them around or edit them into different uh, types as the team debates what the priorities should be. Try to avoid having too many priority items marked in the mind map, otherwise the impact of these markers is lost and in reality you've probably failed to prioritize. 
If this feels difficult to control in a group setting, then a technique we often use with clients is to create a clear top three section in each part of the mind map, where you attempt to summarize the three critical ideas that have emerged from your brainstorming. When working with groups, we prefer to use this method as it gives you a chance to essentially park the brainstorming part of the process and move forward and start asking what are the key things we've heard here. While you should hope, obviously, for some healthy debate and discussion in the group about what those top three items should be, what you don't want is any ambiguity after the event, so arriving at a clearly marked set of priorities in the map that everyone is clear on is critical. To keep the map tidy at this stage, it may also be worth moving all of the brainstorming section into a dedicated branch that we'll clearly label as brainstorming or review. That way people know all of the information, ideas and detail and context from our discussions can be found in here, but the critical items we feel we need to focus on going forward are clearly stated here in these top three sections, giving us a really tidy visual summary, but knowing that all the detail can be found if we want to and need to go and see where it is. So. Having spent some time mapping out our current situation, we can now start to look forward to where we want to get to in some future point in time, whether that's next quarter, next year, or five years from now, based on whatever strategic horizon you're working to. The purpose of this phase is to start focusing on those priority issues, define a clear future state that you want to aim for, and a clear set of measurable targets that will tell us whether we've made it or not. Sticking with the visual approach and working within the same mind map in this next stage of the process is a great way to help your team define a future state that is based on the shared understanding and context that has just been revealed through your SWOT mapping efforts. This helps to ensure that tomorrow's objectives are grounded in today's realities and helps you to work towards a clear, simple visual summary of both the priority issues that have been identified earlier and the objectives that have been set for the future. Let's take a look at how that might work. So here we are looking at a more developed version of the previous mind map. You can see that our top three sections have been made to stand out a little more using some icons and a bit of formatting. And it's these top three sections that we're now going to focus on as we start to define our future objectives within the mind map. Remember, of course, all the brainstorming and thinking so far has been captured and it's easily accessible in the brainstorming sections of the mind map, but they're now hidden out of the way so we can focus on these priority areas without getting distracted by what's been covered already. As we look at the top three items, we can now start to think about how we might turn these insights into the basis of a future objective. As before, if working with a group, it can help to get people thinking about this individually and then in pairs before you start building more into the mind map. But whenever we're ready to start capturing ideas, we can create a new branch in each section of the mind map that we can call goals or objectives or aspirations, whatever works for your group. In our business, we use the popular OKR methodology, which stands for Objectives and Key Results. So let's label this as Objective. At this stage, I encourage groups to think about the aspiration. What is it that we would like to achieve based on the three key issues that we have surfaced during our SWOT mapping exercise? For example, under Strengths in this mind map, we might say that our overall objective is to achieve greater visibility for our work because we've identified our leadership position, a strong team and energized market as our top three strengths at this time, suggesting it's a good time to make ourselves more visible. Now, arriving at these statements and objectives can usually take a little longer and a bit more debate than that, but hopefully you get the point that we can capture those ideas and refine them really nice and easily in the mind map. And again, right here in context with everything we've done already. Having identified the objective, which is our aspiration, we now need to define some key results that will indicate whether we've achieved that objective or not in the future. These are the KRs of the OKR approach. So if the objective is the aspiration, the key results are the analysis. While the objective can be aspirational, big picture, sometimes even a little bit vague and ambiguous, the key results need to be measurable and totally unambiguous. For example, if our objective is greater visibility for our work, the question to ask is, as measured by what? Using this simple question, you can start to brainstorm ideas for how to measure progress towards that objective. Or of course, you might know these metrics already. In this case, if our objective is greater visibility for our work, you could measure that by, for example, the number of times you're featured in your industry press. 
perhaps the traffic to your website or maybe your total social media following. Whatever metrics might illustrate that we have made progress towards that objective. Once you arrive at your key results, figure out what they are, you can once again be clear about which are the most important using the priority icons in the software and can also add markers to the key results that can visually illustrate your progress towards completion. If you're using a tool like Mind Manager, you can have these completions even roll up into the overall objective so that your progress on each of these key results is also reflected in progress towards the higher level objective. As we hopefully tick off and make progress on those key results over time, you can see that the higher level objective also moves to completion. This gives us a fantastic and simple visual way to share and update our progress in key areas with something that can be shared easily with team members and key stakeholders. If we look at a version of this mind map that has been developed further still, you can see how this single document has now gone from being a pretty sort of blank canvas for brainstorming to an excellent visual summary of our current situation, highlighted by the top threes in each section, and is now also a guide to our future plans, as shown by the OKR section in each area. Plus, of course, for anyone who needs it, we know we've also still got an organized record of all the ideas, information and discussion points that brought us to this point in time, captured within the brainstorming sections of the diagram. A single visual document capturing all of this information in a way that's easy to navigate, easy to organize and easy to update is an extremely great illustration of how mind mapping software can help you move right the way through this process. So now let's look to the final stage. What I want to try and show you in this final section is how easy it is to start turning these big ideas into tangible day-to-day -day actions using the exact same mind map that you're building up so far. The purpose at this point is to start turning ideas into action and connect that big picture thinking into people's daily working when they get back to the office. We're also looking for simple ways to monitor and review what happens after the meeting in order that we can illustrate and demonstrate progress and also create some of that accountability and ownership for those involved in turning these ideas into action. The benefits of using mind mapping software for this final stage in the process is that it allows you and your team to switch easily from that big picture thinking phase into detailed action planning all within the same tool. You can map out your actions right in the same document, with all the background and context for those actions readily available in the map for reference, helping to ensure your action planning in the right areas. In addition, the mind map provides us with a visual summary that is easy to update, meaning we can quickly review our progress across many different areas at a glance. Features like filtering also mean we can even review or share certain views of the document that contain only certain information while keeping the other information out of sight. This can be extremely helpful when working with teams or individual team members on the implementation steps following on from a strategic planning process where perhaps they need to see only certain parts of that total picture so as not to get distracted or overwhelmed. So let's take a look at how all of this might look and work in our SWOT mind map. Within each main section of our mind map, we have a clear set of priorities identified, our objectives and key results are defined, and we can now start to brainstorm and capture actions that are going to move us towards achieving those results. While the obvious thing might be to start adding the actions onto the key results, I'd actually suggest creating a dedicated actions branch, which can help you to capture actions that could potentially have an impact on multiple key results, which is obviously an advantage. You can, of course, just start capturing actions such as uh, find new PR agency that we think might help us with that key result of visibility. But it can actually be more helpful to sometimes give yourself and maybe your team a simple set of prompts that can help you think of different types of action. We like to use a simple start, stop, do more, do less set of prompts. Adding these into the actions branch will just prompt think people to think a little bit differently. It's all very well adding new actions, for example, but often people don't take a moment to think about what they could potentially stop doing that might also help. In this example, we might have a stop action like stop paying the current PR agency, for example, in addition to a start action of research potential replacement agencies. 
As we start identifying actions, we can now start to use the task functionality within the software to clearly identify something as an action using the completion icon that we saw earlier. And we can even go further, assigning the action to a particular team member, such as myself or other actions that we might assign to other team members. We can also add a due date into the task. So all in combination, we're creating clear responsibility, accountability, and sort of a measurability in each task we're adding into the mind map. Building out these actions, assigning them to team members, and ensuring we can clearly see our progress on actions is quick, easy, and we're all within the same mind map. You can see we've now moved right the way through from an initial brainstorm through to very specific action planning. As I mentioned earlier, once the mind map is fully populated with actions, states of progress, and team members, it may also be useful to leverage the powerful filtering functions of tools like Mind Manager, which can reduce this now quite large mind map down to the key information you need to see at any given time. For example, I can choose to filter the entire map by team member, and this would enable me to see, for example, all of the tasks that have been assigned to me based on those things we assigned earlier. Alternatively, I could also choose to filter the map by how complete particular tasks are or the due dates on certain tasks. This gives me a really quick way to see, for example, which items might be slipping or behind schedule. Using other icons like flags or exclamation marks might also just help us to uh, make certain tasks in the map stand out further and again give us another option for filtering to see things that maybe are really uh, uh, unexpected. The speed and simplicity of this approach makes it a fantastic way to review quickly with team members and share easy to understand updates with key stakeholders on an ongoing basis. So there you have it, a quick look at how a single mind map can support an end-to-end -end strategic planning process, helping you to review your current position, define your desired future, and eventually capture specific tactics and tasks that might take you there, all within a single, easy to manage, easy to understand, and easy to share visual summary. Hopefully that means no more flip charts, whiteboards, and post-it chaos needed. You can thank me later for that. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to learn more about the use of mind mapping tools for strategic planning, then we've got plenty of templates, webinars, and additional resources at biggerplate.com. If you want to start building your own strategic plans in mind map form, then head over to mindmanager.com where you can download a free trial of this powerful software. Thanks for watching.